Look at all that intrusive igneous rock. Intrusive and extrusive igneous rock. It's so nice being in the deserts of Southern California again. I learned botany out here, cut my teeth on botany. And this is a great plant to show you because it's a, it's a weird, weird variation on a theme. What you're looking at here is a leafless stem photosynthetic milkweed. This is Asclepius subulata. And you can see it's actually got a caterpillar on it right there. It's got a queen caterpillar you know, queens and monarchs, but uh, both will use this as a host plant. And it's actually just eating the pedicels of one of those flowers on this large inflorescence. You can see those inflorescences just look like large teeth, right? Lots of nectar inside. So it's a, it's a host plant. And then of course the flowers feed a variety of insects, especially those tarantula hawk wasps. But it's interesting because it shows what selection pressures the desert environment. This is the driest desert in North America. I mean, the Mojave and Colorado deserts, named after the river, not the state of Colorado, are the driest deserts in North America. Four to five inches of rain annually is what Joshua Tree National Park, which is nearby, gets. And sometimes it doesn't even get that. Sometimes it doesn't get any rain at all in the air. And so because of those intense selection pressures, the drought, uh, you know, this milkweed uh, has basically just taken up stem photosynthesis. The same thing that cacti do and many other succulent plants. They're just stem photosynthetic and they just, they just get rid of leaves altogether because leaves can lose too much moisture through the stomata, the gas pores on them. And so what we see here are these straw-like stems that are quite impressive i mean they're sturdy they're you know they're not flimsy and this is a perennial plant no doubt it's got a huge root system it can live for a number of years no estimates uh, on on how long probably a decade maybe a little bit less who knows but what's really impressive is these flowers and you get a number of milkweed species doing this albicans is another one it looks much like this but they albicans can get you know eight ten feet tall and it's got the same growth habit but the stems are a little bit thicker and the flowers look different, right? They're, they're always really cool and those, you know, impressively unique milkweed flower structure, right? With those, those five hoods, look at that glistening. You got the, the petals reflexed, pulled back, and then you got those stigmatic slits in between those hoods that look like, uh, those hoods that look like teeth. And obviously, you know, it's very, very important for the butterflies too. Who doesn't like the butterflies, right? I'm sure like even Stephen Miller, that Nosferatu looking prick, I'll probably get thrown in a camp for saying it. I'm sure he may be somewhere, if you dosed him and put him in a safe place where he could be honest about his feelings, he would probably even admit that he liked butterflies, right? Right? That guy needs to be dosed hard you know the mdma therapy could change lives out here people we're talking serious anyway uh there you go asclepius subulata wonderful fucking native desert milkweed did you know milkweeds could go leafless and you know in some cases get six to ten feet tall so i gotta go fix it bye